Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indiscipline Mind podcast for Monday, November 16th, 2015. So yeah, it's a Monday. I've got my word wrote for the day. It's, uh, I put, uh, I think it was 1804 was the count for today, which puts me um, above the 33,000 mark. So I'm thinking I, I will be, I, you know, I should be, I should be, um, I should be over 40,000 by the end of this week. And that's pretty much just doing the normal word count, not doing the expanded word count. Um, so that's nice to get that done today. I got, I wanted to make sure I got it done this morning because I, I've got a, um, a, uh, online test to date today in the finance class. It's probably going to take most of two hours. So I wanted to be get the words out of the way. And so the words are herded. And uh, I can focus on that tonight after dinner. Of course, this weekend was the, the terrorist killings. Uh, I'm not going to... I don't have a ton to say about that. Uh, you know, the majority of the obvious things are being said all over the darn place, all over Facebook, all over Google Plus and Twitter, on the news networks, on the football games. I don't need to add to that. Um, you know, I, I got two things I'm struggling with, uh, with it, you know. You know, first of all is my own attitude. And I'm trying to, to work on this and fight this and get past this. But it, it does bug me. It's, it's bugged me for a long time that when we started to, to build a coalition to go after the Taliban and Osama bin Laden after 9-11, um, guess who didn't want to join? And that would be France. And so I'm, I'm fighting this... I'm fighting this you know, unfair feeling of, well, you reap what you sow. Um, you know, because the people that got killed aren't the people that were making that decision. And they didn't deserve to die. And their families didn't deserve to have them die. So I, I, I know it's not a good attitude to have, and I'm, and I'm fighting it, but it's, it's there. And I'm trying to grow past that. The other thing that annoys me is that uh, Paris wasn't the only place where there were killings. There were terrorist killings, uh, at least in Beirut. I'm thinking there were some other places as well. Um, but I, I believe this weekend there were also killings in Beirut. And I saw one story that, um, I think it was a story or it was a comment on Twitter, but basically said, you know, the only reason that the Paris, the Paris killings are getting a lot of press and intention, and the Beirut aren't, you know, it must be a white man thing. And I can't disagree with that. You know, I, I, I'm wondering if it, uh, overall as a Western culture where we've kind of developed the idea that Middle Easterners killing Middle Easterners is good. You know, so how come we don't have NFL players running onto the field with, um, what, well, Beirut's in Lebanon, I think, you know, with a Lebanese flag as well as a French flag. You know, it's. I can't think that that's wrong, that, you know, the media is focusing on France, the American media at least, that's all I can speak to, is focusing on France because, it, with the exception of language, they look like the majority of us. You know, I don't think that's right. I mean, to me, it would seem like it would be a bigger story to talk about um, a terrorist plan that was enacted on more of a global scale. You know, that's truly frightening that they had these things, you know. So they did, you know, Beirut and Paris this time. What's next? I mean, they could be doing stuff in all corners of the globe at the same time. That's pretty frightening. That's pretty frightening. And the other thing is, I, I, I don't know. 
I, I get that these people are hard to find because they're in little groups. But at the same time, it's like, man, we gotta, we gotta find these people. We gotta stop them somehow. You know, how do we find gangsters and, and, and you know, drug gangs and crap like that? You know, it's almost like we need to take some of those techniques and merge them with the intelligence techniques to find these people that are hidden in, you know, various places that aren't a government. I don't know. We need to do it. We need to, we need to find these people. <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, continuing my... My focus on death this morning is, is my book. Uh, I, am, I am moving along well with it. It's word count kind of indicates, but I'm, I'm starting to get a sense for what the denouement is going to be, to use a little bit of French, to what the climax is going to be. I know, I, I've basically broken this, you know, in, in keeping with my title of Symphony of Death, I've, I've basically have broken the book up into eight sections. I had written the first movement, second, third, fourth movements. And then I had some action I wanted to do that wasn't going to be around another set of killings. And I thought, okay, what am I going to do? And, and I just, because I I'd established this, this rhythm, and so I decided I'd thrown in an intermission section. So I'm just about finished with the intermission section. Yeah, and there's been some important stuff revealed in there. I've revealed uh, who the big bad is. Uh, somewhat subtly, but I think it's... You know, I, I, got one more, I got one more little section i got to write in this. A little chapter, or part, part of a chapter I need to write in this. Um, and then I'll be done. Or done with that bit. And then I got the fifth, sixth, and seventh movements, and uh, I've I've got good ideas. I, I know basically what the sixth, fifth movement is going to be as far as what the killings are. Um, I know basically what the sixth movement is going to be as far as the killings and as far as the as far as who is doing it. Yeah, I, I, and I just, I figured it out in a way that can make me do something I wanted to do in this book or with, this, with these characters, you know. Uh, my lead detective, Ying Li, she has a daughter who's about, I think I said three or two, somewhere in there, in a the taller age. And I wanted, to th I wanted to threaten her. I didn't necessarily want... I didn't want to kill her. I wanted to threaten her. I wanted... I want Ying Li to feel peril for her daughter. Um, you know, and I thought about doing a scene where somebody goes into an elementary school or something where there's a lot of, a lot of kids and, and start start killing toddlers and I just didn't want to write that I did not want to write that so I, I found a way that there can be killings I haven't totally settled on the venue although I've got a couple in mind but I, I found a way that there can be killings they're going to be near Ying Li's daughter you know, she will survive but she will It'll be a little too close for Ying Li. Um, I've given Evan, her partner, some real skin in this game, and I and I want Ying Li. I want Ying Li to have something similar. I think. Um, so yeah, that's. And, and then I have, I'm beginning to have an idea of, of the ending. I know where the final 
showdown is going to take place. Um, I know at least one of the people that will die in said showdown, but I haven't, I haven't, I'll, I'll figure the rest of it out. I, I'm actually feeling good that at least I have a sense of where the story is going. I'm, I'm getting, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to reach the 50K. I'm not sure how far beyond 50K I'm going to go. But uh, I, I will definitely get to 50K. So, yeah, that's, that's good. Um, what else is going on today? I don't know. It's a beautiful morning. The sun's coming up. The sky is kind of this creamsicle color right now, which is my, one of my favorite ice cream confections. Orange sherbet and vanilla ice cream mixed together. But, uh, yeah, I'm at 11 some odd minutes. I think I'll let that go for today. Tomorrow will be Tuesday, and uh, I'll be back then talking to you. So, be seeing you.